As content creators and influencers, we know that travel is more and more likely in our future as we travel to create content, to events and summits, and sometimes it means we're going to be traveling on our own. Now, if you're a woman, you have probably heard some different biases floating around, and maybe you don't know how to make the most of your time on your own or just how beneficial it can actually be to your health and well-being, which is why today we're talking with travel coach Sahara Rose. She's going to be breaking down everything you need to know about being a solo female traveler to make sure that you're making the most of your time, effort, and money while you're out on the road. Hi, my name is Sahara Rose DeVore. I'm a wellness travel coach and consultant, and I'm also the founder of the Travel Coach Network, a global community of travel coaches, helping people set intentional trips and providing the most transformative experiences of their lives. And I'm really excited because today we're going to be talking about solo female travel. And I know a lot of the influencers and content creators that hang out with us here on the channel do want to get into traveling more. And a lot of it comes down to the fear or the worry over traveling alone. So today we're going to kind of break down some tips and tricks and things we need to be aware of when it comes to traveling alone as a woman, especially in the influencer space. So what's the best piece of advice you have for us if we're looking to get into traveling on our own? I would really honestly just say the first thing is just to go for it. Uh, there's many limiting beliefs around travel. It could be scary. There's things you hear on the news. There's things that people may have told you of a bad experience they had, but you really don't know just how beneficial it could be on you, your mindset, your mental well-being, your life in general, your business as well, um, if you just never take that first leap. I love that. And as somebody who does a lot of traveling by myself, I know there's a lot of things that I think of, especially when it comes to safety and making sure that I'm doing things the proper way. So what do we need to know when it comes to staying safe and doing things the smart way as we're traveling by ourselves as women? As women, we are very fortunate to have uh, an intuition and a gut that we tend to listen, we have to listen to in many things in our lives. And that definitely comes into play when it comes to travel as well. And I've traveled over 84 countries myself solo, and I've always really relied on my intuition. If something doesn't feel right, a place doesn't feel that good, a person you're talking to doesn't feel right, remove yourself from the situation. Uh, when it comes to safety, also being very mindful of your not only your surroundings and your belongings, but also what you do. I know when we travel, it's so fun to go out and meet new people and to have some drinks and go to the clubs, depending on where you are. Um, but when you're solo, you have to remember that you're independent and you're responsible for yourself. And making the choice, the right choices so that you continue, continue to be in a safe uh, environment and in a mindset that you can make the right choices as well. So as we're looking to start booking these different trips and working in different locations, what are some things that typically draw you to good collaborations and good places to be engaging in as we're traveling by ourselves? Oh, there's so many hot spots around the world um, that are just growing in popularity. There are many digital nomad kind of hubs around the world, like Medellin, Colombia, um, of course, Bali, Indonesia, um, parts of Phuket, Thailand, and more that really have a community of digital nomads. And that really has exploded over the past few years. Now, as we come out of um, the, the pandemic and people are they have the opportunity to travel remote or to travel with their work um they have the flexibility and the freedom and also the mindset and determination to feel more fulfilled to see more places to meet new people uh so places like estonia um it really is just uh, in mexico tulum um as well as playa del carmen there are also really great places where people are kind of coming together and calling it their new home and getting inspired from one another, being inspired from the, the culture and the location and the nature as well. So just finding a tip would be just asking yourself, what kind of environment do you want to be in uh, when it comes to your surroundings? Do you want a, a hustle and bustle of a city? Do you want something more secluded? Do you want to be in nature? Do you want to be by bodies of water so you can take a break from your work and go take a stroll at the beach? 
you want beautiful views? Do you want people from all over the world, you know, kind of living long term in one place? Because it really varies. Um, but it's definitely an industry that is growing tremendously in opportunities more than ever before coming from the woodworks of people to be able to take their work with them and in a new destination and kind of call it home while they, you know, make new friends and, you know, make a new community of digital nomads. So you mentioned that as this is developing more inside of our society, we're starting to see these hubs of digital nomads. How can we, as we're doing our research and as we're looking into this, start to realize where it's going to be valuable for us in terms of finding that community? Do we just guess and hope that things work out? Or are there ways that we can actually start identifying where people are traveling to to give us a good idea of where we should be going as well? Yeah, there's tons of Facebook communities that are specific to the destinations and also the best recommendations. And this is also how I always found my favorite travel spots that are lesser known to you is just word of mouth and and asking people. So if you know someone who has a lifestyle that's very nomadic and you know they've worked uh, uh, remotely somewhere, then ask them, you know, how was it? Do you recommend it? Do you know any other places? Do you know other people who have worked places that I can talk to and ask? Um, just like what you do when you're, you know, when I was sitting in my hostel and asking people, you know, what's around here? Where where should I go? What should I see today? Um, same thing with that. Um, travelers really embrace, want to share these beautiful places with one another. And if a place really made an impact on them, they're more than happy to share that. So Facebook groups, there's tons of them out there or just general travel related Facebook groups. It's a good place to ask those questions too. Um, and don't be afraid just to ask. You don't know who you follow on social media, do a posting and, and um, you know, kind of take a little survey and ask what are some top recommendations as well? You mentioned that you've stayed in hostels before. So as we are traveling, what should we know as a solo female traveler for picking our accommodations? Are there certain things that lend itself to traveling alone or is it kind of whatever works for us on a personal level? Yeah, it really varies. Uh, I stayed in a wide range of accommodations traveling and many under the term hostel and hostel is just a very broad term for more affordable um, living space. And it doesn't even have to be co-living space. Um, yes, there's many dorm rooms, which is the, the typical type of hostels that there are, uh, but there's also hostels that have private um, private rooms as well. The websites like Hostel World or um, um, hostels.com that have, even Booking has hostels on it, Booking.com has hostels on it. Um, has a wide range and it really depends where in the world that you are. Um, I've stayed in some of the most beautiful hostels. I stayed in a castle um, a type of hostel for, I would think it was like, it was around $10 or less a night in uh, Montenegro. And I've, you know, had beautiful private rooms. I've had beachside bungalows for $10 in Costa Rica. Um, so it really just depends, but also it was a feeling that I would, ask myself, like, do I want to be social and be around more people right now? Um, or do I really just need time to myself and I need a private room? Um, what does my budget look like? Do I, you know, want something that I feel a little bit more luxurious in? And again, luxury is defined so differently around the world too. And what you can afford with, uh, when it comes to luxury, if you go to like Bali, something you can get or Thailand is, you know, an insane um, lifestyle versus and such a cheap price versus what you can get, you know, in other places around the world or like in Europe or something where you might pay a, uh, up quite a bit more. Um, so and that's such a beauty of traveling. You have that freedom of choice and flexibility in your schedule, in where you stay and, you know, what kind of lifestyle or what kind of accommodation you live in. When it comes to digital nomads, there's so many uh, co-living uh, working spaces, not only in hostels, have a lot of communal rooms too. You'll see digital nomads all over the place working. I know I was one of them, but there's also um, a, like a brand, Selena is a co-working luxury ho budget hotel space that is beautifully designed and it's like a hotel, private rooms, but they're designed to attract digital nomads to make it easy to have, um, you know, 
meet with other travelers, other uh, business owners um, to connect your laptop in places. There's a different events to socialize. So, and we're going to be seeing even more of those come about too, as hotels and accommodations are trying to attract remote workers. That makes a lot of sense. So for people who are traveling and working and maybe they want to see a wide variety of places and locations, or maybe if they're going to a location and they just want to stay with different accommodations, do you have a specific set amount of time that feels really good in one location before moving on to the next location to ensure that you get the full experience of the area that you're staying in? Yeah, that's a that's a tricky question because it's very sub subjective to everyone. And I know for me, I was quite the fast traveler, but I was also I spent the majority of my years traveling before I started my businesses. So for 10 years, I didn't have a plan. I didn't have a schedule. I didn't have work to do. So I was more of a fast traveler, hence going to 84 countries. Um, but it was, you know, by choice. I made the most of it myself because I knew what I was looking to experience. Um, but I know with many travelers, they want to kind of settle down a little bit. They want a little bit more um, time in a place. They want to feel more at home in a place. But the, if a place made me feel like that, I went back to it. So I've been back to Thailand many times, Bali many times, and stayed for months because it was a place where I just really liked the lifestyle. So I liked getting a little taste of places, seeing what the next place is like, and then realizing, you know, I really did like that place a little bit more. It made me feel a little bit more home. So I'm going to go back. But many people just choose one place, hunker down and, you know, work on their business uh, from there too. So it, it really depends. Slow travel is something that is really on the rise as a topic in the industry. So taking your time traveling, spending more time in one location, especially as we see remote workers traveling more with their children and their family too, or traveling for business. That makes a lot of sense. And because you have been to so many locations over your time traveling, I want to ask what in your opinion are some of the best places that you would recommend to solo travelers who want to go and experience the world? That's a very tough question as well, because everywhere in the world is so different. I always kind of give my top answers and ugh, they're so diverse, but I always say Thailand. I've said it several times in this um, conversation, but Thailand is a great place because it has a lot of diversity to what it is you are looking for as a traveler. Um, very budget friendly. Um, you can also have you know a sense of luxury. Um, nature is insane there and you can meet a lot of new people the culture is just amazing the food is great uh the weather so um i always was drawn back to to thailand um i really liked cape town south africa it was stunning i as you can tell there's a theme in my answers it's more of like nature um <laughs> sure. so i love bodies of water i love the ocean i love the trees and forestry i love animals um so cape town had some of the whitest um uh, sand beaches that i've ever seen and i got to see um go on a safari and see animals in their natural habitat so that was really an impactful trip for me um and the food is surprisingly affordable there, which I thought was interesting because it was, you know, you can get a really fancy steak and lobster dinner for um, very, very cheap. Um, and uh, I really, um, Spain, Spain is one of my favorite countries too. And in particular, the north of Spain, which not too many people travel to as much, they tend to go, the southern cities are a little bit more popular, but i backpacked the northern coast of Spain and city like Santander um, it is just uh, in unbelievable. The cliffs that you can sit at and walk and just like see the beautiful view, they're sceneries I have never seen before. Um, and then lastly, I'll say Iceland. Um, there's a reason why they film out of space movies there because it looks like you're on another planet. And there's every type of nature that you can think of from waterfalls to black sand beaches to icebergs to the ocean to the sea 
to gr the greenest green. So it's really a beautiful place and a good place to have really unique experiences as well. I love that. And speaking of really unique experiences, we know that solo female travel is something that can potentially be a little taboo. It's something that we sometimes caution people against just because there's so much that goes on with it. So I want to talk a touch about the mindset of this because as we are starting to venture out, as we're starting to come out of the pandemic and we are starting to take more control of our lives and have the ability to travel because we're now more digital based, I want to talk about the benefits to women going out and traveling on their own. So what do we need to know in terms of why it's so important and valuable for us to actually take that step? Absolutely, because you just don't know just how beneficial traveling can be on you and how big of an impact it can have on your your life, your mindset, your your business inspiration, and more until you go for it. Um, like I said, there's so many li limiting beliefs around solo travel and so many fears that are put into it, that it's unsafe, it's unattainable, it's not affordable. Um, you must, you know, have a, it's only for a certain type of people, uh, to do you, it's not sustainable. You can't go long-term, um, and it's just not safe. And that's just not true at all. And I'm living proof of that. And I know those who do travel solo, um, can, you know, attest to the same thing. It really does transform your life. And it's not that you have to travel to over 84 countries or you have to travel for six months out of the year even small trips here and there, but having the, the conversations that I have with many of my travel coaches and my travel coach network who focus on empowering solo females traveling, it's because their stories were just as impactful as, you know, mine was for myself. And I was a, an aimless college student. I just graduated in 2010 with a degree and society and family expected of me to climb the corporate ladder and to do everything that, you know, was right on paper, but it didn't settle right with me. And I didn't know what I wanted to do with my life or who I was as a person. I was 22 years old. Who does know who they are at that age, right? So travel, I didn't know it was going to help in any way, but I wanted to see what, what was out there. And I didn't definitely didn't expect to fall in love with it and uh, catch the travel bug. But like many people I did, and it really did put into perspective for me what kind of life I wanted to have and who I wanted to be and what kind of people mattered to me and what mattered in life to me and what didn't matter. And um, it boosts your confidence and you grow in dependence and you learn your weaknesses and your strengths and you meet incredible people who change your life and you make friends all around the world and you see places that are so near and dear to your heart that leave a lasting imprint on you and your perspective in life. Um, you see other ways of living and you gain appreciation and gratitude and um, you understand other people and other belief systems. And I always say that if everyone was able to travel in this world, the world would be a much better place um, because we'd be more accepting and understanding just on just how different we are, but also at the same, just how similar we are as human beings too. I love that you pointed out that taking these steps on your own really do bring you a lot more confidence. You can learn who you are as a person. You can figure out where you belong inside of this world and learn so much about the world around us. So I want to know, as you were doing your solo travel, what is one thing that you learned about yourself that you hope that other women will learn about themselves as well? I want other women to know that they can really sculpt the life that they really dream of. And again, it's not that you have to be a digital nomad or you have to hop around the globe for the majority of your life, but it could, it's as simple as one travel experience and meeting one person who really changes your perspective or having one experience that really puts your changes, your mindset on something that could transform your life. So it only takes one time. So just knowing that you can, you know, you don't have to do what others have set up for you in your own life. And sometimes travel, you realize the freedom, the happiness, the flexibility, the passion, 
and the interests that you have that, you know, if you stay in your comfort zone all the time, you may not realize. What's the first step that we should take if we are going to start traveling on our own? I would start connecting with other solo travelers virtually um, and asking, you know, getting their advice and, you know, just feeling as it's not that you have to feel prepared in any way because you're never going to. That's the thing with travel. It changes all the time and you don't know what to expect, Mm -hmm. but connecting with others because solo travel not everyone in your life is going to understand you and why you do it and why you have that lifestyle. And those listening to this probably are like, yep, that's me already. Cause I know that was me, but, and that's okay. But when you can have a community of friends, even if they're virtually who just get you, it really can help because the pressures of society and family, and where you feel like you should be in your life or what you feel like you should be doing at that age in your life might be honing in 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 that voice in your ear. But when you have that support system and you're inspired by others and you're supported by others, it can really um, give you that boost of confidence um, that you need. And also, you can also plan to visit people um, in, in their home countries and stuff too. And that's something I loved doing when I met people around the world. I love that it really comes down to solo travel isn't necessarily alone or isolated. It's community and it's collaboration and it's making sure that you're part of that community and that conversation before you step out into it that really will give you the confidence to be able to take full charge of what you're doing as you are traveling. Do you have any final words of wisdom for women who are going to step out into doing solo travel? Just go for it. (laughs) Just like um, I have a book on Amazon called Uh, Hey, you just go. And I always say that just go for it. You can have every thought in the world. You can listen to all the voices in the world telling you something different, but it's you, it's up to you to take that leap. And just like starting a business, just like whatever it is that you aim with your, whatever goals you have in life, you have to just go for it. I love it. Where can everybody connect with you online? Yeah, you can find me on uh, the Travel Coach Network dot com the travel coach network on instagram and on facebook um or i am sahara rose the travel coach if you love this episode be sure to hit that subscribe and notification bell because sahara rose is coming back for two more episodes breaking down how we can be traveling in an impactful way inside of our businesses and making sure we're saving time effort and stress as we're doing so if you got questions or comments drop them down below and hit that subscribe and notification bell for daily videos to help you level up on your content creation to save you time and effort on your social media content and to make sure that you are living your best luxurious life while spending less time creating the content that's going to allow you to create more profit inside of your business from your online presence. I'll see you in the next episode.